Hi, my name is Mackenzie Sajeka, and today I'll be showing you how to plant a plant properly. Now the first thing we want to do here is actually figure out the spot where we want our plant, and then we have to dig a hole two to three times as large as the pot itself. So what we want to do here is take our shovel and start digging the hole. What you do at the end is you want to water it so it's not put into shock from being transplanted from the plant, from the pot to the bed. So yeah, this water, hope it grows. Hi, my name is Mackenzie Sajeka and today I'm going to be telling you a little bit about an itchy subject. But before that, I'd like to introduce myself. I'm a previous Camp Turf member. I did the program in 2013, and I'm currently a landscape architecture student enrolled here at OSU. I am also currently working at the Botanic Garden at OSU. Today I want to talk about poison ivy. Poison ivy grows all over North America, and you can find it, be it in your backyard or out in the wildscape when you're doing recreational activities. That's why it's important for everyone to know how to properly identify it and respond if you ever come into contact with it. Alrighty, this is a perfect example of where you would find poison ivy in a wildscape. To begin with, I'd like to talk about uh, how to identify poison ivy. This is really important because this could ultimately keep you from coming into contact with it altogether. So first off, I'd like to begin uh, talking about the plant. Notice that I'm handling the plant with latex gloves on. That's because I don't want to get any of the oil on me. Typically, poison ivy will have kind of a red or sometimes green stem if it's a younger plant. But what you'll notice is that each leaf looks more a little bit more like a branch. And these are considered leaflets. This is where we get the saying leaflets of three, let it be. That's because each little leaf has three smaller leaflets on it. Now, some plants may look similar to this. If you're ever unsure if a plant is poison ivy or not, it'd be best if you're just safe and avoid the plant altogether. A good thing to note is that poison ivy can come in many different forms. This is low-lying ground poison ivy. There's also vine-like ones that you really have to be careful about because they grow up alongside trees and bushes. And there's also very tall and sturdy, almost wood-like poison ivy that can kind of be mistaken as trees sometimes. The oil that's naturally occurring in the plants is called urushiol. It also occurs in other plants like poison sumac and poison oak. It's important to know that urushiol, uh, when you normally come into contact with it, the main way it's transferred is when you break the leaflets. Um, one thing that you should really be aware of though is that Surfaces that come into contact with the oil can retain the oil, and if you ever touch those surfaces, you can still get poison ivy, even without touching the leaflet directly. This means that if you have any animals, such as dogs, uh, but if you pet their fur, the urushiol oil that is sticking on their fur can be transferred to you, and that's where you can get poison ivy. This also applies to any and all sports equipment, uh, gardening tools, any hard surfaces that can also retain the oil or any material-like surfaces that can absorb the oil. In the instance that you do come into contact with urushiol, some key characteristics of poison ivy is that you'll start seeing a small rash develop where these little red blisters start to form. Sometimes they're itchy, other times they can be very painful, and most of the time they'll be a little bit of both. The poison ivy rash varies from person to person. Some instances, and for some people, it may appear quicker, but typically uh, the span that you'll notice if you have poison ivy will be anything from eight hours up to seven days. And so the rash will actually last up to three to four weeks, and if it lasts any longer than that, you may want to see a medical physician. One good way to prevent coming into contact with poison ivy and preventing yourself from getting the rash is making sure you wear the proper clothing. To protect your skin, you want to make sure to wear close-toed shoes, long pants that cover your ankles, and preferably a long sleeve shirt in addition to gloves. Now, if you feel like you come into contact with poison ivy and may have some of the urushiol oil in your clothing, you will want to wash it. When putting your contaminated clothes into laundry, you want to make sure that you have gloves on. 
This way, the urushiol oil in your clothing can't come into contact with your skin before it's washed out. When you've come into contact with poison ivy and may think you've come have some of the urushiol oil on your skin, you want to react fast and try and rinse the oil off your skin. A couple of key things is that you want to use cold water. That way it closes your pores and slows down the process in which the urushiol oil soaks into your pores. In addition to that, don't use soap. When you use soap, it actually breaks down the natural oils that your skin normally has. This way, your skin is unprotected and the urushiol oil will actually seep into your skin faster because it is unprotected. Now let's talk about the removal process. When removing poison ivy, you want to be very careful and make sure that you don't compost it or burn it or anything else. You'll want to put it in a sealable bag and throw it away. So here's a good process to remove poison ivy. You want to open up your bag and place it over the top, like so. From here, it makes it easier, by the way, if you have a clear bag, because then you can see what you're doing. You want to grasp the base of the poison ivy and you just want to pull up and make sure you get it by the roots. From there, you're going to flip the bag over. Make sure that all the poison ivy you want is inside. And you're going to want to seal it or tie it, whatever type of bag you have. And from there, you can throw it away without having to worry about getting poison ivy. In summary, we've covered all the different ways to take care of poison ivy. How to identify it, how to react to it, and how to respond safely to it in terms of removing it and treating the rash. We hope you enjoyed this video. It's part of our Oklahoma Gardening YouTube channel. You can also find even more videos on our OK Gardening Classics YouTube channel. And join us on social media for great gardening tips, photos, and discussions.